I'm Jonathan Ronzio. We're here with Spencer Montgomery of Cascada Capital Partners. We're at the, the Crypto Block Conference, uh, which is just about to kick off, right? We're, we're kind of in the, the backstage staging boardroom. Spencer is one of our, our keynote speakers here. And, and this is all things cryptocurrency. And you're actually kind of digging into like what happened in 2017. It was a hot year, and you're looking back at it, right? Right. If anyone were to predict back in January what happened this year, no one would have ever even taken them seriously for one bit. Um, you know, my wildest dreams were accomplished in May, and, and then it went like 5x, almost 10x from there. So it's been just a, one of the most incredible years ever. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely been a wild ride. I mean, even in just the, the past week, like Bitcoin is meteoric, and, and then Ethereum, and, and like riding off the back of, of the crypto kitties, right? <laughs> and, and whatever's going on with that. Uh, I'll let you explain a little bit more about, about all these kind of technologies, but man, it's been blowing up. Yeah, you, you can tell kind of the pace and of the acceleration of, of how much it's blowing up by who's texting you, right? Um, my, my grandpa's text me on a daily basis now. Uh, my aunt, my cousins, my friends that I haven't talked to, uh, all thinking that I'm, I'm mega wealthy now um, <laughs> and, and asking all sorts of questions. And, and so you know that it's really finally kind of catching on. And, and that's probably because it's being seen on the Today Show and CNBC. Yeah. Um, and so it is really exciting. And so with, you know, with everything on the rise right now, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, all, all the other uh, fringe currencies that I don't even know about. Like, yeah. uh, Do you know how many currencies there are? No, I really don't. There's actually. 1,300 different cryptocurrencies. That's incredible. Yeah. And, and so the first one, Bitcoin. when did that start? That was, it was launched in January of 2009. So, so from 2009 to today, 1300. <clears throat> yes, and Bitcoin started at like fractions of a cent to $17,000. Insane. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was reading about, I think in 2010 was the first documented transaction of Bitcoin for goods and it was whoever paid what is now like $100 million for two large pizzas. Right, well, I mean, I even, and four Bitcoin on a used car, which at the time was $10,000. It's now almost an $80,000 car that I bought back in uh, on August. So. so that brings up a, an interesting point. Like, how, how much can we take Bitcoin seriously as a, a, an exchange or any cryptocurrency as an exchange for goods and services with how volatile it is? Yeah, so people are looking for Bitcoin to be everything. They want it to be gold, they want it to be Visa, and everything in between. And I, don't, I just don't think that's the way we need to look at it. It's more, right now, it's seen as a digital store of value. And it's really main use case is to be an unseizable store of value. If you hold it off an exchange in your own, and you own the private keys, um, it's the only asset that can't be seized. Uh, and, it's, and it's maintaining its value because there's a limited quantity. Uh, so to say that it's not Visa and it's not a, a method of, a, um, of an exchange, like, there will be other currencies that solve that. I like Dash and I like Litecoin and, and there's a lot of people that will hate me for saying this, but Bcash is in some sense trying to solve that as well. So Bitcoin just can't be all of them. And that's why there are so many different currencies. They're all trying to solve a different problem. Now, regarding the security of it, like you said, you, you can, it's the only thing that you can protect and, and someone can't seize, right, with your keys. But what about something like NiceHash or, or any vulnerability that, that gets, you know, your wallet gets hacked, right? Right. So, you know, exchanges can be hacked, and that's what happened with Mt. Gox, and, and there are other risks, but if you hold, it is possible to hold your currency offline and make it impossible to hack. Uh, what's interesting is this, you know, the responsibility is given back to the user. We live in an environment where we want to give uh, the responsibility to everybody else, the responsibility to the banks, to you know whatever services we use, and we pay a tax in some sort, whether that's a you know whether it's you know the trust tax or you know the cost of the services. But uh, Bitcoin allows us to take back that responsibility and really control our own our own wealth. Now, with all the buzz that's going on uh, around everything right now, like so, somebody like your grandmother or grandfather, whoever texted you and, and asked about it. Um, to what extent are you saying, like, yeah, get in? Because because I, I can remember back when I first heard about it in 2012, I wish that I got in then, but I, I just wrote it off, right? And and then I got in this year. But now with with it rising and shooting up to currently over 17,000 Bitcoin, you know, as, as just that one, 
is that pumped up on speculation and hype? Is it still good to buy? So it's it's all, I mean, there's always gonna be speculation. It just depends on how much, what level of speculation. I mean, I was nervous to tell anybody to buy at 5,000, 10,000, and now we're at 17,000. So you can't, I, you know, I have been wrong. Uh, but at the same time, this is eventually gonna go to $100,000. The time frame on that, I don't know. If you, I, I'm nervous for anyone that's trying to get rich quick, that doesn't know the technology, doesn't know what they're getting into. So I am, I am telling people to be very cautious, um, to go learn about it, so that when it does crash, they, they do have strong hands and they, and they can weather through it. I imagine right now, a, most of the people buying will sell when it dips 10 to 15%. Mm -hmm. And then they're gonna get wrecked and then eventually go back up and they'll, they'll be sitting on the sidelines again. Um, that's what I'm nervous about. So for, for the people that, that might be wanting to get, get rich quick and are investing irresponsibly, investing what they're not, like, shouldn't lose, right? Um, you know, like, how, how do they better understand the technology? Like, what, what would your e-pitch be to somebody to kind of get them up to speed? Well, I created a website just for that so they can have the resources. It's at uh, www.cryptobuzz.co. Um, I do a weekly newsletter. Oh, I have done a weekly newsletter, and we have a Crypto 101 section. Uh, but you really just have to, I can't describe what it is in, in 30 seconds and, yeah. and get come up to speed. Um, you just have to have the determination to, to do the dirty work. There's so many good, great podcasts, there's YouTube videos, there's articles, whatever medium you use to learn something. Um, I highly recommend Twitter and following, um, there's a lot of great people to follow on Twitter. You just gonna have to make it a priority. There's not a, again, it's, there's no easy way to make money, but uh, I am confident that if you put the time in, that there is definitely a, a great way to do that. And now, the blockchain technology, it's, uh, it's so much more than just currencies now. There, there's tons of use cases being built on top of these blockchains and expanding into different industries. Like, what, what's some of the exciting things you're seeing? Uh, so it's all around smart contracts, uh, the self-executing code that then has a transaction a part of it. Um, I was talking with a group today that are doing event ticketing, where you can purchase the ticket with cryptocurrency, Ethereum, but at the same time, you're able to see the providence or the supply chain of that ticket to make sure that it's not being um, sold on a different market for prices that shouldn't be paid for. Um, I'm also interested, you know, crypto, you mentioned crypto kitties. Yeah. Crypto kitties are like a digital version of Pokemon or Beanie Babies. And at first glance, you might think that's ridiculous, but um, it's, it's a, a way to bring people to the space. There's these kitties that are unique and they have certain features that are more rare than others. And as kitties um, breed with others, then another trait will maybe emerge itself and be another rare kitty. And you're hoping to breed these kitties to find the, this, this rare kitty. Um, I don't want to discount the type of, I mean, it, it seems funny, and, and but, but there could be so much more. Like Those are just like the ideas that are gonna spark the real innovation that's going to, to take place. We're seeing smart contracts around real estate, really in almost every industry. I think that's why there's so much hype right now is because it is infiltrating every industry. Yeah, and things like CryptoKitties are kind of like, it, 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 it makes it a little more uh, you know, easy on the palate too, right? It's like, it's like Candy Crush. It's, it becomes more of a mass market adoption thing rather right. than like somebody who doesn't understand, understand what they can do with blockchain technology or how to even buy it, right? So many people don't even know, how do, how do I buy Bitcoin? Right. Um, one of the things that I think in blockchain in general is there's really three use cases for blockchain. For one, it's asset transfer, and that's where currencies make a lot of sense. The second is um, cross-organizational workflow, and that is uh, jargon for supply chain, where you're bringing together a lot of different parties, whether you have manufacturers, suppliers, vendors, transporters, and as a product gets transferred across all those parties, you're able to have a blockchain to be able to identify where that asset is across that tra those transactions. So it's adding a lot of transparency, um, making things digital, it's adding a lot of efficiency, and then added security because you can't go in and tamper with that blockchain. So I see a lot of use cases around supply chain 
uh, being some of the first. Okay, and what, what about the event space? I mean, you're here uh, talking, this is coming right off the heels of, of X Live, and now it's uh, yeah. CryptoBlock, and and what, what's going on there? So, uh, I don't want to talk in theoreticals, but I like you think about you know, if I want a uh, buy a ticket to the Golden State Warriors game, I want to know that that's authentic and that it's not a fake ticket. Right now, you know, tickets are become PDFs, and you never know what if that PDF has been given to somebody else. And there's a lot of question marks. And so, blockchain, you could put ticketing systems on the blockchain, so you could have the transparency to know exactly where that ticket came from. You can validate it that it came from the right source. You can know that what prices it's been sold as it's been sold, um, sold across different markets. And again, adding to security and transparency and, um, and efficiency. Now, regarding what's behind the blockchain and what's behind like what, what it takes to create a, a coin, uh, is there any concern about like the the computing power being used for data mining? Yeah, it's actually been uh, brought up more and more as more people have been aware of it. But you know, it I actually see it as a benefit. It's not we're not printing money out of thin air. It takes actual resources to create these coins. And so there is at least a base value for this currency. Uh, and at the same time, like compared to any other currency, like gold takes a lot of energy. Uh, printing money takes a lot of energy. Uh, so I think with different um, energy creating resources that, it, it, you know, it, it is an issue now, but I just don't see it uh, being any different from any other creation of, of, of value. And what about, so that's like the, the start of it. Now what about the end? Like how, how do we, it's just so mysterious to, to think we don't know what the amount of this is going to end up to be, right? Like, where does Bitcoin go? Yeah, like when, when it is a finite resource, right? Like, how, how big can it grow? No one really knows, right? No one knows, no. I, I mean, you can imagine, you know, gold has a market cap of about six to eight trillion dollars. So, you know, what would Bitcoin be if it was? You can see, I can imagine Bitcoin very well being into the trillions of dollar market cap. Uh, what Bitcoin can be individually, you know, it could get to a, a million dollars per coin. I, I doubt that. I think there will be other coins that perform specific functions that take value away. Like you have all these forks. We've had like four, four forks this year. Mm -hmm. uh, if there were those forks, you know, Bitcoin would be you know, over 20,000 right now. Um, and all of those forks are, again, trying to accomplish different things. So I think you have to look more as at the market cap than Bitcoin uh, in itself. And who, who decides when it forks? That's, uh, so you'll have a community of developers that will decide to, to fork and to go a different direction. Um, it really means nothing if it doesn't ever get traction. You have, you have Bitcoin, gold, and you have, um, I really don't even know all the names of Bitcoin gold, but. Essentially, if there's not enough development behind that specific fork, it will eventually die off. Interesting. It'll be really hard to replace Bitcoin because of all the network effects and all of the, you know, people know Bitcoin more than anything else. So the, the you know, vendors accepted cryptocurrency, it'll probably accept Bitcoin first. Um, but they're, you know, the news media, they're starting to talk about Litecoin and Ethereum, and eventually, you know, there will we'll be um, other currencies that are accepted as well. And the, in terms of the whole crypto market, the cap just pushed beyond 500 billion, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're at half a trillion. Like a, a month ago, no joke, a month ago we were at 200 billion. So it's gone up 2.5 times in one month. That's not sustainable. No. Um, we are looking, you know, it could go up another, I'm not saying it could go up another uh, 500 billion and get to a trillion. The, the faster we go, um, it means there's going to be a, a bigger correction. There's just you, you just have, you know, we're we're dealing with new technology, but we're still dealing with humans, mm -hmm. and humans still react uh, pretty much the same way, where things can get to a certain level and people start taking profits. So it, it can't go to infinity. People will take profits. So uh, people are nervous, and there's going to be plenty of of articles that say that this is the biggest bubble ever. And so there will be a healthy pullback, uh, but again, we're still so early. You you ask the average room, and they've heard of it in Bitcoin, but maybe two people own it. Right. So, yes, we're overvalued today. Um, will it if we're at five hundred billion 
in a year from now, I would consider that undervalued. So we're somewhere in between. Regarding the correction, do you, I mean, for now the end of this year, we've only got a few weeks left to go. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you see the uptrend continuing as, as it has, or do you think there's, there might be a six $7,000 correction before the end of the year? There's a lot of factors that play into that. You have the CME futures opening up, um, which some say is bearish. I don't know. There's the Christmas, and you have a lot of people talking to their family and, and helping them get onto Coinbase, and so I see that as bullish. But at the same time, this has already gone on for more than a month, and so uh, my predictions, which everybody's predictions will be wrong, is I don't see this getting, at most you could go to 24,000. I think if it goes to 24,000, that's just easier for me to sell. Um, I think around this 18,000, it's kind of interesting, but it'll be, um, it's, it's more, I wouldn't give it much more than two more weeks, uh, maybe start of January, but after that, there's, there's got to be something healthy. And you know, we're looking, I don't think it's out of the question to expect $12,000 again. Um, and so when I tell people, I just, just be patient. Mm -hmm. If there's something, buy when nobody else is buying. When, you, when you're trying to buy right now, I mean, there's exchanges that can't handle all the demand and you can get priced into some, some ugly things and there's you know, manipulated markets, people are pumping and, and dumping things. Like, you need to educate yourself Find the coins that really make sense and buy them when nobody else is. Like uh, the type of buy Litecoin was at 50. It's at 350 now. Yeah. I sold all my Litecoin because I am more of a trader. Um, but do I plan on buying Litecoin again? 100 percent. For sure. Um, when the frenzy kind of dies down. I think I, I bought into Litecoin around like 46, and uh, and I got out uh, on Thanksgiving. That was something to be thankful for. Yeah. It had spiked up to like near 80, and that was sweet, but, uh, but of course it's exploded since then. So, two things I want to say. For one, don't compare yourself to others. That's really where you can get to be very unthankful for your success. There's always going to be someone that's made more money than you have. Second is that uh, I've been able to, what I've found amazing in crypto is that I've already been able to change two lives. I uh, taught a Bible study class last year. And didn't mean to, but I ended up teaching a class on cryptocurrencies and, and told anyone that signed up for Coinbase that I'd give them $10 of Bitcoin. Well, one kid took that and then ended up educating himself and put $500 more in. And he came up to me last week and said, thank you, you helped me raise, I mean, earn $5,000. And he's in high school. It's like life-changing games. Yeah. Another guy put in $1,000 of Ethereum, which turned into 40000 And he recently found out that he had a tumor and there was an be able to work for the next six weeks and was able to cash out that to like sustain his family. He's got three kids who are living in San Francisco. So I've seen the gains be able to really help people. Like um, so, this is real money. Yeah, um, it's amazing. And it, uh, but at the same time, like be cautious. This is a time right now to be preserving capital, not uh, not to take uh, huge risks. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the bubble a little earlier. Um, you, of course, we've seen graphs that are comparing it to, to every big bubble yeah, know, I mean, from the depression to 2008, everything, right? I thought, you know, I was nervous when Ethereum was 40, and then it went to 400, yeah. and now it's at 700. So this is not, and we don't want to say this is the new normal, because every time you say the new normal, it's crashes, but really this is, this can be almost seen as the te um, an adoption of the technology, and technologies that get adopted in an S-curve, like think about how popular the demand for iPhones were, you know, it never, like it didn't crash, the demand for iPhones eventually leveled off. Yeah. And I see that um, with cryptocurrencies eventually. You know, we're still a long ways away from that. Will we, see, I, will, I think we'll see, a, you know, a dot-com type of crash in the middle of this as speculation exceeds utility. Um, and that's why you kind of got to look at this as a, a long, a long game. That's awesome for, for our chat right now. Uh, I know you've got, uh, what time is it that you're going to be speaking at? It's at 5 o'clock tonight. 5 o'clock, so, so we're coming up close. The, the first ever, the kickoff of the Crypto Block Conference, and, uh, and you're, you're getting it going, right? Yeah, it should be fun. That should be fun. Cool. Well, stay tuned for that, and thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks for your time. Of course. Sure.